Welcome back to the last block of this event. Um, the first presenter is already here. His name is Sage Abdullah. He's talking about. He's going to talk about customizable uh, permissions. Uh, no, universal things, but yeah. I'll oh, change of plans. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad to be here as well. And thank you all for the, um, to the organizers for making this wonderful event happen. I'm Sage. I've been working on Wagtail itself for about two years now. And I've been a Wagtail core team member for the past a year and a half. Yeah, I originally wanted to talk about customizable permissions in Wagtail, but we had a change of plans in the details of the implementation, so I had to change my talk. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to bring this talk. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about universal listings and how we evolved Wagtail's listing views and beyond. So I'm going to start with a trip down memory lane. I'll start with uh, going back to Wagtail 2.0, even though, uh, so this was released in February 2018, before I even heard about Wagtail. It looked like this, which is vaguely familiar, but it looks quite different. It still has the light teal background in the header. And this is Wagtail 2.16, which was released in February 2022. And you'll notice that uh, we made a few changes to the, um, to the colors but not much has really changed since 2.0 in terms of the UI. Uh, and then I'm going to do a recap of the editor, uh, which I think Tom showed earlier today. This is how the editor looked like in 2.16. And in 2022, we have aimed to do a complete redesign of the page editor to make it more accessible and easy to use because uh, the editor is the place where our users spend the most time in. And we have a three month release cycle, so it was, it was impossible to complete the implementation in one release. So we started um, doing it uh, bits by bits. And the 3.0 release, we implemented the breadcrumbs, the collapsible breadcrumbs. So, uh, this is an iframe. I, <laughs> I ran a lot of um, Docker containers to run multiple versions of Wagtail. And um, so we have redesigned the tabs and we added the status side panel to show you the information about the page. So previously it's shown right here, which kind of um, obstructs the way uh, to the content. Um, and by moving it to the side panel, the editor can see the content right away. And in 4.0, we finally completed the redesign of the um, editor. We added the preview panel, which was one of the first things I worked on when I joined Torchbox. So um, yeah, we had the multiple devices for the preview as well. And in 4.1, we made a few tweaks, and we also added the minimap to help you navigate through the page more easily. In 4.2, we, uh, we mostly just made uh, smaller changes to refine the experience. And in 5.0, we added dark mode to the admin, and not just the editor, so this is across the admin. But what about the other parts of the admin? Because uh, the admin is not just the editor. We have lots of other views. This is the snippets listing view in Wagtail 2.16, which is very simple. We have the search at the top, and there's only a single column in the table for the, uh, and I guess the checkbox for the bulk actions. But uh, for the content itself, it's only a single column for the string representation of the snippet. And for the page listings, it looked like this. 
Um, but yeah, I'm going to focus on the snippets listing, which you can see um, the iframe can sometimes break. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to focus on the snippets <laughs> listing because uh, snippets are for non-page models, and we have a lot of non-page models in the admin, like the stuff that you see in the settings, and also for listings like the report views. And then in 3.0, we changed the header, but it mostly was still the same as the one in 2.16. In 4.0, we added the breadcrumbs, and we moved the search to be in line with, with, the head, with the heading, and we had additional default columns for the edited, and uh, we also added support for using revisions and drafts for snippets. That's why we have this status column. And that's actually the only reason why I, why I added the breadcrumbs, because um, in the editor for snippets, I also added support for the preview panel, which means you have to put this preview button at the top, and without the breadcrumbs, it would look strange. So I had to copy the breadcrumbs over. And in 4.1, not much really changed. And in terms of the page listings, um, yeah, we, we also put the side panel here. But for the listing itself, there's not much uh, that has changed. Uh, there is not really any new functionality here. And if we jump to 5.2, we added a few more things to snippets, which, uh, to name a few, the ability to have custom columns. And we have also moved the action buttons to be inside this three dot drop down, because previously it was um, this. Uh, visible on hover buttons, which is not very accessible. And we also added the ability to export the listing to, um, to a spreadsheet, and we also added the ability to have custom filters. But these um, abilities to have uh, the export and filtering, it's, it's not uh, a new thing in Wagtail, because it's actually um, extracted from a similar feature in the report views. Um, and uh, so this is the report view for locked pages in Wagtail 5.2. And if we go back to 2.16, nothing has really changed. So it's still pretty much the same, even though for the page editor, we've made such leap to the implementation for the designs. So we had to do something about this. And Ben and Wright, our designer at Torchbox, who designs the UI and UX for the latest Wagtail features. Um, this, uh, uh, he opened a discussion on GitHub to showcase the designs for the new listing views. Um, the aim is to enhance the searching and filtering capabilities of the page listings, but also to eventually roll out the same um, patterns and functions to all listings in the CMS. So this is what you get with the latest um, stable release of Wagtail 6.1. Um, this is an example of a snippet listing with custom filters. And uh, this is not an iframe, by the way. It's, it's just a screenshot. Um, but yeah, I want you to take a good look at this screenshot. So we have the new-ish um, breadcrumbs with the icons and the header buttons, and the search and filtering are now at the top right, and the filter is inside this component, the pop-up component. And we have a section that tells you the current active filters. And, uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to talk about how we end up with this implementation, because it's not straightforward. But, um, yeah, uh, I'll get to this in a bit. So for the search functionality, it has been around forever. Um, you can see in this commit, it's from 2014. It's before Wagtail 1.0 was released, I think. Um, but yeah, this is one of the 
one of my favorite things to do on my job uh, to blame people. <laughs> I use git blame and look for the commit that introduced the changes. Um, I wrote a bit about this on, uh, in a blog post on wagtail.org where I said, when you're working on a 10-year-old project like Wagtail, looking at these old commits give you more context on how the code came to be. In some cases, the decisions made in the past might no longer be relevant today. But in other cases, you might find that our ancestors were way ahead of their time, and you might want to build on top of what they've done. So the header search is an example of the first one, um, because it relies on inline scripts, uh, which do not play well with the content security policy standard, um, something that wasn't as popular back then as it is now. And last year, one of our core team members, LB from Australia, uh, refactored the header search to use Stimulus. Stimulus is a small JavaScript library that we have been adopting to replace jQuery and inline scripts within Wagtail. And LB has been the main driving force behind the initiative. So, refactoring. It doesn't sound like a big deal, and since it is always something that happens behind the scenes, it's, it's not immediately visible to the user, unless you end up breaking the feature somehow. So I'm not going to go into details how the refactoring was done, but I promise this bit of refactoring will be important later. And like I said, filtering with Django filter was introduced for the report views in version 2.10, to be precise. And this is an example of the other case where our ancestors were way ahead of their time because we end up reusing this code a lot. And I moved the generic, uh, sorry, I moved the filtering code from the report view to the generic index view um, so that it can be reused for snippets. In theory, I could have just copied the same code from the report views to the snippet views or just extracted the, few, uh, the, the code to the snippet view. But I thought this bit of code might be useful for other listing views in the admin, even though at the time it wasn't used other than for snippets. So in 5.2, we started the work on implementing the uh, designs that our designer made. Um, we started by adding the search mechanism to the page listings. And like I said, with Wagtail, we have three month release cycle, so we cannot do everything in one release. So we had to do it in smaller chunks. And for page listings, we've always had the ability to search for pages, but it's been a separate thing to the left sidebar. And it's not integrated into the page listings, so if you start to explore the tree structure, you won't be able to search, but if you search and you continue exploring, you'll be taken to the page listings. So it's not a nice experience. There's, a, there's some friction in there. So yeah, we, we added the search, field, uh, the search feature in 5.2, but not filters. And in 6.0, we started adding filters to the page listings. Um, this is done by refactoring the page listing view, which originally used its own class. Like it's an entirely, it's an entirely separate class. We refactored it to reuse the um, base generic index view, where it now contains the filtering code because I extracted it there. And this was how it looked like. Um, we didn't have uh, the new pop-up component just yet because um, our main front-end expert, Thibaut, was busy with other projects. So I had to suggest Matthew to use um, this dialog component that we already have to put the filters in um, in the meantime. And then um, I had to do my share of some front-end work by implementing the new designs for the header 
uh, the, the breadcrumbs with the heading in, incorporated into the breadcrumbs and the search and filters uh, to be moved at the top right. And after that, we wanted to add the active filters information. And we separated the work in, in two parts, the backend part, which Matthew worked on, and he implemented the feature to, to list all the active filters. Um, but uh, so he was focusing on the back end. And it was for the front end, we just render a link that removes the filter, and it will do a full page reload. Um, it works, but it's not the final version that we want to merge into Wagtail, so this was uh, marked as draft. And then I worked on top of his PR to implement the Ajax reload and the designs for the little pills, we call them, uh, for the active filters. And let me tell you, um, for, to, to implement the Ajax reload for, the, for clearing the active filters, I, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, the, the feature first. So if I clear it, now as you can see there's this little spinner while it loads uh, the results. And to, to implement this, I didn't have to write a single line of JavaScript. Why? Well, because LB has done the work to, uh, when he refactored the header search to use stimulus, um, it allowed me to just reuse the code by adding these attributes to the HTML, and it will use the same code as long as I provide the URL that Matthew provided. It will do its thing and refresh the page using Ajax. So that was nice. And to implement the Ajax filtering for um, the filters pop-up, I had to move the input elements for the filters to be inside the same form as the search. And then I just change a few attributes to use the submit method of the form. Um, and this also, I, I didn't have to write a single line of JavaScript. I just reused what LB has written, which is nice. And the final piece of the puzzle is to implement the pop-up component which was done by Thibaut. So we thought, all right, that's done. Um, we've got the Ajax reloads and the new pop-up component. Well, famous last words, because uh, we encountered a lot of issues after we started um, integrating the new pop-up, because um, let me show you. So this is the current version, and for example, if we have a date filter, um, the input needs to be rendered inside the same form, but the date picker also has a pop-up. So if we render the pop-up element inside the filters pop-up, it will be cut off by the pop-up. But if we put it outside, then uh, you'll run into issues like um, so let me show you. Um, if I click on this filters pop-up uh, and I click anywhere else, it will close the pop-up. But the problem is, to make it so that the date picker is not cut off by the pop-up, I had to put it outside of the pop-up. But if I click on this, if I didn't fix it, it will immediately close the pop-up. So um, that's the example of, of, of a problem that I encountered. And this is because we are integrating different libraries on the front end to do this, because like the date picker is one library, and then the pop-up is another library on, uh, uh, that we also um, put some custom implementation to, to allow you to have like this go back mechanism. So yeah. And also with uh, the way that Tippy, our uh, JS library that we use to render these tooltips and also the pop-up menu, it by default unmounts the um, input elements, uh, well, the contents of the pop-up when it's closed, which means 
if you have input um, any filters in here and you close it, it will be lost when you start searching because it gets removed from the HTML. So I had to work around that as well. And yeah, uh, not to mention like the servers, uh, the, the synchronization for the state between the client and the server because the searching and the filtering, is, it, it only refreshes the results. It doesn't do a full page reload, which means if you have applied, let's say, a filter, and in some cases, you have these, for example, download to export the, the listing as spreadsheets, and you would want the filters to be applied to the export as well. But since we are only refreshing the listing, we also need a way to refresh the links to these downloads as well. So that's just some examples of, of these um, problems that we encountered once we start integrating all of them together. So, yeah. Um, uh, I also implemented some of the nice to have features like um, the ability to open the relevant filters as you click on these active pills. But there was also the problem of when you're clicking on this, the pop-up thinks you're clicking away from the element, so it will close. So yet another example. But anyway, um, but I love how the spinner that shows up when you clear this, it, I didn't implement that at all. It was done by the controller implemented by LB when he changed the header search. So if you look at the spinner in here, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it uses the same code. I didn't have to write a single line of JavaScript to implement this spinner. So yeah, it was nice. Anyway, the lessons that I learned um, when doing a project like this, um, do please integrate as early as you can. If, if it's possible, don't wait until last minute because you'll encounter these problems that I just showed you. And teamwork makes the dream work. So I loved how each of our, our team members used our expertise to build these feature. feature. Um, and yeah, it, it was a fun experience for me. And libraries come at a price. So while they may allow you to build uh, fancy stuff quickly, once you start integrating them, um, you'll start seeing some weird bugs. So also play the long game. Um, if you write your code, you, uh, if, whenever possible, think of how it can be reused in the future, like LB did, which was just so awesome. So. Thank you, LB. <laughs> and how can you use this? Um, you can do nothing, because if you already set up search and filters for snippets, you'll automatically get the new UI and UX in most cases. And for snippets, um, that means you use index for the model, or you set the search fields for the, uh, on the view set, and you set the filters. Um, and yeah, we didn't change the API for this since they were using the old design, so you'll automatically get the new design. And for Whitetail 6.1, you can have custom page type listings with page listing view set. And is that it? Um, well, yeah, in the future, uh, uh, this I promise this is the last thing. Um, I'm just uh, showing you I'd, uh, my plans for the future. Um, I want you to be able to customize the breadcrumbs and the buttons at the top, along with the search and filters, which were obvious, and like the buttons that show up here, all without customizing the templates. So I'm hoping that you can do this by just changing some Python code uh, with, an, with a few subclass, because I know how painful it can be for overriding whitetail templates, especially for third-party packages. But yeah, if you have any more ideas for such um, enhancements to the whitetail UI and UX, 
or just new features in general, tell us. And that's it. Thank you.